Monday morning. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. Today we are going to go through the absolute basics of prototypes. I'm going to explain what prototypes are, why you should learn them and how they work. This video is for you if you are coming from another uh, programming language uh, and you're already somewhat familiar with object-oriented programming but you are confused about how to do it uh, in JavaScript specifically. This video is part of a series on object creation in JavaScript uh, and you will probably be very confused if you start watching the video here instead of the video series from the beginning. So you can click in the, uh, find a link to a playlist of the full series in the episode description. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what prototypes are, why you should learn them, and uh, how they work. What are prototypes? You are probably used to uh, doing inheritance with classes. In JavaScript, we achieve inheritance using prototypes. Prototypes and classes are different beasts. Um, the real world equivalent to a class uh, is a blueprint. You have a blueprint of a building and you use that blueprint of a building to create new buildings. The real world analogy uh, to a prototype uh, would probably be a delegate, like a person that you vote into office that can vote on your behalf. So that when the government needs to make a decision, they will ask the delegate instead of going around to uh, millions of people and asking what they think. Because they have delegated that decision to their elected delegate. Many of you might be thinking, why should I learn prototypes? Because in newer versions of JavaScript, there is a class keyword. So your knee-jerk reaction might be, screw this prototype shite, I'll just use classes instead. But that kind of reasoning will lead you into trouble for two reasons. The first reason is that you're missing out. Prototypes are, is a very simple and powerful uh, inheritance model. It's, it's very nice. And the second reason is that the class keyword in JavaScript is just a thin layer around the prototype. It actually uses the prototype under the hood. You can't really escape learning about the prototype if you want to be a solid JavaScript programmer because you will always uh, get confused constantly when you see bits and bobs of the prototype sticking out of your classes, which you will. You might ask, why did they add a class keyword at all if the prototype is so powerful? Why don't you marry the prototype? The reason that classes were added to JavaScript was simply that people are very, very used to classes and confused by prototypes and they don't want to learn new stuff. Prototypes is ironically a simpler concept than classes, but it's still very confusing coming into JavaScript if you're very used to the class inheritance model. And a lot of people are uncomfortable with learning new things. And this group of people that really don't want to learn anything new, they, they are very strong and very big. So classes have been uh, implemented in JavaScript on top of the prototype in many different forms. Which has made the prototype even weirder and ha harder to understand because uh, whenever you read a, a, an article about uh, inheritance in JavaScript, there is this weird Frankenstein's monster of the prototype and the class jumbled together in some... Uh, the fear of learning new and different things is actually so big that uh, the class keyword has now actually been shoved into the uh, ES6 standard. I don't necessarily think that is a bad decision. If people absolutely positively want to cling on to their classes and use the class inheritance model, uh, then at least we should give them a standardized way of doing it. It's sort of like giving needles to drug addicts. And even if you're hell-bent on using classes in ES6, you still need to uh, understand the prototype because it's so ingrained in how uh, JavaScript works. You simply can't avoid it. As with JavaScript in general, actually, let's just learn to like this thing because it is inevitable, it's there, we need to accept it. Okay, let's begin with something uh, extremely basic. Uh, this is going to be a theme of this series. 
uh, we're going to be learning, really learning the details of the language from the beginning. We are going to write a function that makes some noise to the console. Da, da, da. Gonna do it, talk, uh, and it's going to console log. Uh, do, do, do. Sound, oh sorry, sound. And I'm going to, to, to call uh, this variable sound. Uh, let's run that. So sound, no, sorry, <laughs> we have to pass it something. I'm very tired. Uh, woof. And we run that, no, the dot prototypes.js, and it says, woof! I'm going to do the same thing again, but I am going to, this time, I'm going to do a talk function. Oh, sorry, talk, and, da -da, and it's going to, Oh god, this dot sound. Right? And we're going to call the talk jump. This wah, ha, ha, node dot uh, the, the, the prototypes.js, I call it uh, the file that. And it's going to return undefined. Uh, and this is because this, in this case, uh, is going to be we talked about this in the earlier episode and really watch it if you haven't but I'm gonna log this out and just give you a brief recap like this see now that this one is this print statement here and this big ass object over here that's the this object what this is when talk is being executed and it, as you see here like you see the set timeout here and this console here and that means that this is the global object, and the global object, it doesn't have a sound property. So we're going to assign this talk function to an animal object. Uh, let's call this animal, and the animal is going to get the talk function. We can send it like this, and we are going to, hmm, let's just call animal.talk. Animal don't uh, talk. Pew, pew, pew. See what that gets us. Ah, all right. So if we now check the uh, this uh, this uh, console log statement here, we see that it's actually now this equals the animal uh, animal object. So it's gonna be function talk. And the second uh, console log statement, it's this one. It's still undefined because animal, as you see, doesn't have a uh, sound property. I have a tripod here. Oh, this episode is, uh, I'm a bit stressed out, to be honest, because I'm prepping for the uh, Brazil JS uh, talk that I have. <laughs> And at the end of this week, I'm flying to Brazil tomorrow, so I'm... Ah! But either way, when we call a function like this, when it's, uh, a, it's assigned as a property on an object, and we, we call it like this, that means that uh, JavaScript will assign the animal as the this context of the talk. So whatever is on the left of the dot here will be this when we are executing uh, talk. By the way, uh, a new handy feature in ECMAScript 6 is that we can, when we have some an assignment like this, where uh, we're assigning a property uh, with the same name as the variable that we're assigning to it, we can simply omit this. And it this is the same thing. So you see, like, this will be the same, uh, same thing. Anyway, this is not very useful yet. Let us... Uh, do a uh, <laughs> let's do a, a a cat and we are going to uh, that is this is finally gonna get a sound right it's gonna say meow bam and now we are going to do this object set prototype of the cat we want to set that to be animal. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to comment it out and just uh, do 
uh, try cat dot uh, talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bam! It's gonna give us an error. Cat dot talk. It's not a function, right? Because you see, cat cat does not have a talk function. Uh, but what if we do this? Like we move this up before we call cat dot talk. We set the prototype of cat to be animal. Going to run that. And now it works. It says meow. So what just happened? Uh, when we do this, when we uh, access the talk property here on cat, when we do this, what JavaScript, the JavaScript interpreter is going to do, it's going to go here, go, go and look inside of the cat object literal, and it's going to go through it and see like, hmm, is there a talk property here? No, it is not. Hmm, why, where could the talk property be then, is the JavaScript uh, interpreter wondering. And, hmm, it might be in the prototype, it will ask itself. It's going to look in the prototype. Does cat have a prototype? And it will see that we have set the prototype of cat to be animal. So it will walk to the prototype and see, like, is there a property called talk there? And there is. Uh-huh, okay. Then we will call that one. And that is what happens. So it's going to call that one, uh, which, like you see, like the reference goes here, and it's going to call this. Uh, and it's going to reach this line, which is logged out here. Like, the, this object is now going to be the cat. So, even though there's a prototype chain that uh, sees the animal, like the, the, the this context when calling talk, it's still going to be cat. It's not going to be animal, even though the animal is a prototype. It's still like the cat that is the center of attention here. That is still going to be this. When you call a property on the cat, uh, uh, cat object uh, and that happens to be a function, it's still going to be assigning this to be the cat, even though the talk method does not really exist on the cat, it exists on the, uh, on the animal uh, prototype object. I'm just gonna show a, a, another example, uh, dag, dog, and I'm gonna go sound, a wolf, and we are going to object dot set prototype of dog, and that's going to have animal, and we're going to do dog dot talk. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this um, line here that logs out of this object and just keep the one logging out this dot sound. And it's gonna go meow woof. And you can set up a uh, prototype chain if you want, uh, if you want multiple levels. So let me show you how that works. I can do let dot uh, prairie dog equals uh, maybe how function, and I go this dot sound to uppercase uh, and I do console.log bonk, 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 bonk. and let me uh, call that prairie dog dot how this is gonna give us an error if I call it correctly uh, bonk cannot read property to uppercase of undefined because sound is undefined and as you see, uh, that is simply because, well, there is no uh, sound on prairie dog. But if we, before calling how, go object, dot set prototype of prairie dog to be dog, and run it, it's gonna go woof or something. Let me delete the cat stuff. We're all about dogs today. It's important to understand that 
prototypes are delegates. They do not create a copy of uh, the original animal object or, or anything like that. Dog will actually delegate the prototype access to the original object. So they don't work like classes which creates uh, a sort of copy from a blueprint. So for instance, let's say that I, uh, if I change after setting the uh, prototype of the dog to be animal, I go and change animal dot talk to be something else like a function called uh, 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 console dot log I am a little teapot and I go node prototype such as and you see that what I am a little teapot uh, and because you see here like dog.talk here, even though we set the prototype up here to the animal object uh, and we change it after doing that, uh, dog was still like, when we access this talk property here, JavaScript will go uh, and we'll see like, okay, hmm, there's no talk property on the dog. But it looks like the programmer has set the prototype of dog to be animal. So I'm going to go look in animal. And okay, I'm looking in animal here. And here's talk. Good, there's a talk property. But we've changed that to be talk here. Uh, so it's not going to go here because this has been reassigned. This no longer exists. Uh, it has been garbage collected, maybe. Uh, and now it's going to go into here. Well, I am a little teapot. It's still going to have access to this. Like, uh, for instance, this dot sound. Let's run that. I am a little teapot. Woof! I'm using some very convoluted examples here. This is absolutely nothing uh, at all how you use the prototype in real life. But I'm using these examples to try to get you to understand that the prototype is just a way of saying uh, that for this object, use this other object as a backup, as a delegate, as a prototype. If someone calls my object uh, with a property that does not exist on my object, go look in this other object. That is what the prototype is. Set prototype of is pretty much never used in, in real applications, but I've used it here in order for you to, to try to get you out of the, the class mindset that we're creating uh, objects using object.create and new and this and all that blah, 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 that confuses the concept a lot. Uh, like, it's just a delegate that we assigned to an object. This was just the absolute basics of the, the prototype, like just showing you, at least me trying to show you what the core concept of the prototype is. But either way, prototypes are delegates. You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning 0800 GMT time. If you have thoughts, questions, insights about the prototype, check out the comments section below and uh, add your comment or help someone else out that is confused. I will also try to help you out if none of your fellow viewers are faster. I am MPJ, until next morning... I am MPJ, until next Monday morning, stay tuned.